Disclaimer, I do not own the clips or music shown. These are used for review and entertainment purposes. Thank you. Oh. Drive through a Burger King. Can I please get a Wobble Jr. with onion rings? Make it a meal so well. Gap House and Gap House is me, Camden, on channel Camden. May asking, why the scarf? Well, um, that leads us to the topic of today's video. Back in 2014, Sega thought that Sonic did, needed to be more popular in the West. Now so he's already popular in the West. He's one of the most iconic video game characters of all time. But he needed something new, something to bring new life into the franchise, and he decided to create a new universe titled Sonic Boom. Like I said, it was going to bring new life, there was going to be new designs, new characters, new everything. And they thought that 2014 was going to be the year for Sonic the Hedgehog, and something that would change the future of this franchise forever. In some ways, some ways not expected, and decided to try this out with a game called Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. And that game went, uh... Uh... <laughs> yeah. And like I said, it's a new universe, a new take, new everything. And if I could compare it to one thing, it would be the ultimate Marvel Universe. You know, new designs, new characters, a different continuity. While the older continuity still stays the same, just without the, uh... You know, um... um it, 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 you know what I'm talking about. So, the most iconic part of this... Sonic Boom Universe was the Sonic Boom, the TV series that also released in 2014. While they were developing Sonic Boom games, other called Sonic Boom Shatter Crystal and Sonic Boom Fire and Ice that no, no, nobody talks about, this show, like I said, was the most iconic part of Sonic Boom. And it's one of the things that people remember the most. As this show released in 2014, as a CGI animated show about Sonic and his friends going on adventures. And since it's different than what we normally have for Sonic, it's about them going through like wacky scenarios like them switching bodies or any other cliche you can think of in a TV show. Basically we get to see more of what Sonic and friends' lives are like after they fight Dr. Eggman though they also still fight Eggman in this show and we also get to see a bit of Eggman's life as well. Like most episodes are pretty slice of life while sometimes they have a big high speed adventure that you're used to with Sonic. Like I said the show released and a lot of people like it and some don't. And there was some controversy uh, around when this whole Sonic Boom thing released that was among the Sonic fan base that I'll get to later. And you would think that Sonic Boom is still around to this day. Uh, no. No, 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 it is not. It, 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 it didn't end well, which I'll get to later. Before I talk about my thoughts on this show, there's also other Sonic shows with Jaleel White, you know, voicing them. The one that was super wacky. The other one, which was kind of dark. And it inspired the Archie comics. And then we have Sonic Underground, which is something I'll probably end up talking about someday. Ah, just a little joke there. What? What? Whoa! Sonic X, which I already talked about before many years ago. And um, it's a pretty good show. When, when, when this kid isn't on the screen. And Sonic Prime, which is currently on Netflix, which is the current Sonic show that's on right now, and it's pretty good so far, and I, and, and you, you should check it out. Now we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the show. If you were um, expecting, you know, since it's called Sonic Boom, if you were expecting, I don't know, maybe Sonic to, to, to go boom, to see him blow up, um, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but um, uh, it doesn't happen. 
pr pr pretty misleading title, truly. Now, I also got to talk about how this show was basically my childhood talks. Uh, I grew up watching Sonic X while I also grew up watching Sonic Boom. And Sonic X is what got me into Sonic. And I was already very familiar with the character. But I remember one morning, I, I it was like really early, I woke up, and then Cartoon Network was on the TV. And, and young me was like, oh look, it's, it's Sonic. I know that guy, but he, he has a, a scarf. And I tuned in and watched Sonic Boom. And yeah, I watched this show pretty much every week, whenever I could. It was shown every weekend, early in the morning, on Cartoon Network. You may be thinking most people don't wake up that early, but when I was a kid, I, um, I, I was a different child. The, whole, the, the, the true hit game. Sonic Boom Fire and Ice, and, and it has like a a, a, a a DVD inside which has s s some episodes in it. And to be honest, uh, um, yeah, no one talk. Uh, sometimes I forget I had this game, to be honest. Let me know in the comments if you also played this game. Uh, it, it's better than Rise of Lyric, at least. This ends our segment of. Childhood Talks. Um, now we, uh, as we jump into the show, you may be asking, why am I wearing this? Well, I'm um, going to look at bro, even he has a scarf. It's too big for him though. Yeah, uh, the designs, which was a major talk be between those times of 2013 to 2014 and uh, they were revealed and some were okay with it and some really really didn't like it and uh, th th there were m memes and a bunch of a, a lot of things being made <laughs> out of these yeah 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 boy now you're gonna need to wear these I mean, come on Sonic having blue arms T t totally, I, I definitely won't see a certain, a certain person that that, 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 that would get mad at that at all. Of carrying into something else, and and Eggman is like shaped like Gru for some reason. I mean, they both commonly want to do something to the moon, so both in, both in something with a character named Vector. And again, we're not gonna talk about the. Uh, their appearance, let's talk about the contents of their character. Well, Sonic, voiced by Roger Craig Smith, and I gotta say, Roger's doing a pretty good job voicing this guy, as he's pretty good in general, but I feel like by the time this show got here, I feel like his voice range, like, like got even better voicing this character. The evolution between Sonic Colors and Sonic Frontiers shows how far he's gone with voicing this character. Here, since it's a different Sonic than the one we're used to, he's more laid back, he's more chill and sarcastic, and he's a bit of a egomaniac sometimes, though Sonic is very confident in, in himself and he's very free, but not to the point where he's an egomaniac. Like here, uh, he cares for his friends though, and he, he is a true hero, but he isn't as like, uh, as loud and as eccentric as Sonic typically is. But well, he does have his moments though. Hey, the guy has some pretty funny lines in this show. And then we have Tails, who's e exactly, almost exactly the same as you, you typically expect him to be. But he has a crush on someone, and it's not a, a, a plant alien. Amy is not as scarily obsessed with Sonic. She, she's, she, she respects his boundaries, and she has a bit of a temper like normal Amy. But she also is more the nicer person in the group, and wants to rationalize with people. 
And I gotta say, the characterization of Amy in this show is not bad. And I gotta say, it's probably one of my favorite iterations of the character. And newcomer Sticks the Badger is a, a, a conspiracy theorist. I, I just imagine maybe, I don't know, maybe Alex Jones, but if he was a, a, a badger and, and, a, and a, a, a girl in and, and, and the Sonic universe. Just imagine that. And then we get to Knuckles, who you know is uh, pretty strong and he's very passionate and guarding the Master Emerald. And uh, he doesn't have a tolerance for you know Sonic's nonsense and sarcasm at times. And also he can be kind of gullible and kind of oblivious to certain things. Just chilling. Watching TV. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. They just made this guy a complete idiot in this show. Like, he, he, he is dumb. Just, he's, he's dumb. Oh, wait, I can't read. Give me that. You know how Shadow the Hedgehog is a complex character in the games? It is a character about self-discovery and redemption and finding out your true destiny and who you are. And other people tell you what you're made for and you decide your own destiny and what you're meant for in this universe. And you went from a guy that was super vengeful on the planet because they took away someone he cared about to a, someone who now rose up and fought darkness, even if it cost his life. And then, even when he doesn't remember who he is and he still kept fighting and step continuing to fight for what he believes in, even when he doesn't know what he truly believes in. And later, when he does regain his memory, he lets that in the past. He keeps going, finding his own destiny. He does. And even in Sonic 06, when Mephilus told him that he was made to destroy this world, he ignored him later and realized that. He'll keep fighting, even if people will hate on him or try to hunt him down. Shadow the Hedgehog is not an emo, edgy rival like some people think he is. But nah, bro, he's Dollar Store Vegeta. He, he's just a generic, uh, a, a angry rival. People's misconception that Shadow is just some gen generic, angry rival that just hates everything and everyone and doesn't like anyone. Even though... <laughs> That's not true. And he's bent on destroying the world or killing Sonic and, and nothing more. Shadow Basketball! The MVP of this show is Mike Pollock as Dr. Eggman. Mike Pollock has been voicing this guy for such a long time. And almost anything Mike is in voicing Eggman. He is so enjoyable and entertaining. He's like a, a little egg ball of joy that people is happy to see every time he shows up. And, bro, in this show, it's just a major highlight of that. Like, even when he's not trying to blow stuff up or kill Sonic, he is still hilarious. And some episodes, whether it's him having to stay at Sonic's house and him annoying them, or maybe... Him having some sort of brother <laughs> is also on this show, and you know, computer room. Find, Find the, the computer, computer room. room. Find the computer room. About the characters, let's talk a bit about this show's formatting and the plot. It is generally simple. There's not a much story arcs in the show or anything complex like that. It's generally simple. Sonic versus Eggman, but when he's not fighting him, he's doing something more simple or slice of life. Like say it could be Sonic or Eggman switching bodies, or Sonic and Knuckles being in a contest about who's got the best look, or uh, like I said earlier, Eggman having a twin brother, or them having a sleepover during a storm, or Tails having a crush. Or like, like it's generally simple and it's not completely original as other shows, mainly sitcoms, has done these things. Like a sitcom, but with 
Sonic and Friends in it. Like, like I said, with the episode with Styx having a pet that was a evil robot dog and Knuckles trying to find a family. But it turns out Knuckles already has his family with Sonic and Friends. And while they're not completely original, it's still kind of entertaining seeing Sonic and his friends and his enemies go through these types of events. I mean, the voice actors are the same ones from the games, and it's nice them seeing them voice act the characters in comedic situations. Like some of the jokes land, but some don't. Some you see coming a mile away. Well, some kind of get a, 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 a chuckle in you, like, like it gets you a chuckle here and there. But with almost every episode, it's like the writers are in there. Like, they just, they just feel like, oh, wait, there's not enough action in this episode. Um, uh, ho hold on. Big man in there, and he has to, to, to fight Sonic in a, 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 a big robot fight, and the episode just ends with them talking about what lesson they learned. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say this in Childhood Talks. I, 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 I got this. I, I had a, a, a Sonic and a Knuckles, too, but they, uh broke said it doesn't really have a major story arc it's just the self-contained episodes that if you would try to get into the show you can just jump at almost any episode from season one and you're just be like oh okay and then right there it's different from like maybe sonic x where you have to start and watch because that show is story arc heavy but here it's it's a, a, a bit different. Mentioned that uh, not even Chaos Emeralds exist in, in in this universe. No no Chaos Emeralds. No Supersonic. No 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 no. But yeah, that's typically season one. It's more like a sitcom show, but with Sonic and friends in it. It is. It's fine. Not anything special, but something to give you like a chuckle or two every now and again. And also, sometimes when their conflict gets resolved in an episode, they just, they just fade to black as soon as the conflict ends. And bro, now we get to season two, and, uh, I don't know, but something kinda sprouted inside of the writers when working on this show between season one and season two. Something happened in that studio. I can't explain it, but with this season, they have like a lot of self-aware jokes and meta humor in there. Since we live in a <clears throat> post-06 world, they make a lot of jokes about Sonic's reputation or something in his history or something that's happened in him in a game. Like, at this point, I, I expected Deadpool to start jumping out of the screen. Tomato Potamus 2? That's the best one in the entire series! Tomato Potamus never worked in 3D. Game companies always ruin their beloved franchises. And they never should have changed the color of Tomato Potamus. Like, it, it was insane. I, I did not expect this many self-awareness, like, in this show when I was re-watching. That must have woken inside of the writers. I don't know what it is. They even had an episode with one of their crazy fans reading fan fiction to Sonic. And they made and they cracked a infamous Son Amy joke in there. But this season, uh they do try to put a little bit of lore in there. It's not a lot, but they have a four parter in this show with uh robots from the sky. But, but not from Angel Island, though. Episode of this show where Sonic gets a hold of a big mech suit. And uh, it's kind of like a symbiote. And it's having an effect on his body. It's making him more of a jerk. And also some upbeat music plays while he's walking around town. I, I never heard of this before. I, I truly wonder what, 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 what is going on here. And then we have a finale, which Eggman tries to create a video game, and he uses motion capture 
for Sonic and his friends. And then he tries to trick Shadow into being in the game. And then some multiverse stuff starts happening. And then Shadow wants to to destroy the world. It's that it was it was it was a pretty cool finale, I gotta say. Man, I wonder what season three is about. All of your mocap files were destroyed. Well, there's always next season. And uh, yeah, uh, the show got canceled. Yeah. Um. After the first season, Cartoon Network put the show on Boomerang to to let it die. They put a show with one of the most iconic video game characters of all time. Just just on their sister network just there just just to die and this hurt the views and the audience a lot with the second season and you know with how rise of lyric went this show did not get picked up for a third season and after that sonic boom as a whole died it was like Uh, from 2014 to 2017 Sega really thought this was going to be their next big thing the next like new world for Sonic for the future for registered audiences but nope it was something that was short-lived and yeah I mean, when you think about it Sonic Boom wasn't really going to go on forever it's clear this is something for a specific time for the character. I was like, okay, that's a part of Sonic's mid 2010s history. I think it was gonna go along and, and, and go all the way up to now. Because I mean, Sonic is already popular in the West. You don't really need a, a, a whole nother world with Sonic and introduce a new. Sonic's already popular in the West. Why did they do this? And if you wanted to introduce a whole new generation and younger audiences to Sonic, then introduce them to the Sonic you have? I mean, at the time, Sonic Colors and Generations were around, and those games were pretty successful. And as of right now, the Sonic movies has introduced a younger audience to Sonic. Anyways, what did I think of it? Sonic Boom is not a perfect show, but if you were expecting the big, grand, movie-scale adventures of Sonic, then uh, you're not gonna get that. I mean, sometimes, like in some episodes when Sonic does go to a temple to bring the light back to his village, maybe them dealing with multiversal stuff, but Besides that, um, you, you're gonna get a, a little, a little sitcom show, like a slice of life type of thing with Sonic and friends, but they fight Eggman, and if you're going in just for a show that's, they'll give you a chuckle here and there, and see a little something with Sonic and friends, then, uh, you feel like you're gonna have a pretty good time. Nothing groundbreaking or nothing to write home about, but it's something pretty nice and entertaining for the time. And I think you should check it out. The animation is pretty neat most of the time. Sometimes it can look a little unfinished. The characters, while not completely complex, are they can make you laugh, and there's something in there pretty likable. Even when some of them don't completely represent what the character should be. But then, in the end, this is just a fad. Something that was just a part of Sonic's history. Something that was just there in the mid-2010s. Not something to actually go up forever. And for this, that, I think it's just fine. If you're trying to get into the franchise and want to start with something, then these are the ones that you're just starting with. They're good introductions to the franchise, and... It's showing the basics of Sonic's lore. Nothing groundbreaking, but it's something that's kind of funny and 
entertaining and that will make you feel at home. Please. Well, hope you guys like, comment, not a mean comment, and subscribe. Now if you excuse me, I'm about to put on some sports tape. Can I please take off the scarf now? The meme! Approved!